Okay, so now we're going to be looking at the uh, development of the CNS. Okay, so uh, just a quick recap. Um, initially, um, when you have the uh, embryo, uh, it's made up of two plates, like that. Um, the top plate is called the uh, epiblast, and the bottom plate is called the hypoblast. And then, uh, just for orientation, um, on top of this here, you have one thing, one thing that goes up there, and one that goes up there. Here's the amniotic cavity, and here's the uh, primary, the primitive yolk sac. Um, now, over to, uh, after a while, you get the formation of the um, the precordal plate. This is going to be the future mouth, and that's actually going to go attach the epiblast to the hypoblast. So it's going to prevent anything from going up there. And then the other thing you're going to have is going to be the primitive streak and the primitive node. So this is the primitive streak and node. And so what, what begins to happen is uh, cells from the uh, epiblast start to go in through the primitive streak here. And go down and form a little tube here. Now this tube is called the notochord. Um, and so as soon as that, so now basically what I'll do is uh, just so we can reorient it, I'll, I'll make a cut section through here. Um, and once you have that tube, this is no longer the epiblast and the hypoblast. I'll show that actually. We'll just show that right here. So what we have is now we have this was top layer. And here's the bottom layer, and here's that nodal cord. This is that nodal cord, and then you have some material on this side, and you have material on this side. Now it's going to be called a trilaminar disc. And a trilaminar disc, uh, this is the uh, ectoderm, and this is the endoderm, and here we have the mesoderm. So what begins to happen now is the nodal cord in the middle. Uh, begins secreting um, a lot of growth factors, which is going to uh, uh, stimulate the ectoderm. And what you're going to get is um, the ectoderm right above it is going to start raising up because of the growth factors from the uh, nodal cord. And so what happens is eventually, as it raises up, so let me just draw another one here. So as it raises up, you get the whole, all the fold, you start, you start getting to fold it and depress inwards, like that. So you get this type of um, de interior depression, and the tops are folding. And so here's the nodal cord, which is stimulating all of this, and then you have the uh, endoderm here, and then this is a... Uh, Substance on the outside. Now, there's a few, there's a few key things that we need to point out here. Right at the top, right here, this area, this is called the neural crest cells. And what's going to happen is um, these these edges are going to continue to go towards each other, and they're going to uh, completely fuse. And once they once they fuse. Um, then we're going to call this we're going to call this area right here the neural tube. So let me just show you what it looks like once it's fused. Okay, you're going to have um, a neural tube that's formed in the middle here, and it's going to be hollowed out, and then the ectoderm is going to go above it like that, and then you're going to have the endoderm uh, going here, and you're going to have the nodal cord here, and then you're going to have this here. Now. These neural crest cells, before it actually fused, the neural crest cells actually got away. They actually left, and we're going to come back to uh, what they actually become. And so this is the formation of the neural tube. Now, this neural tube is what will make the future brain and spinal cord. And the nodal cord actually goes on uh, to become the uh, nucleus uh, pulposus of the uh, intervertebral disc. So... Um, now, once this neural tube is formed, so once you have um, the entire neural tube is formed, so let's just go here real quick, uh, we have the primitive streak, we have the neural tube going this way, and then we have, the, now there's a pore here and here. 
this is the anterior neural pore and this is the posterior neural pore. Um, if, if the anterior neural pore, so let's just talk about the anterior neural pore, if it doesn't develop, uh, we get a particular condition uh, that's called anencephaly. And actually what you what you tend to get is, and so in anencephaly there's obviously no forebrain, and so what you tend to get clinically is uh, you get increased alpha fetal protein um, and you get increased ac uh, acetylcholinesterase as well. And this is basically associated uh, with you know, mothers who have uh, low folate and also associated with uh, maternal diabetes. Now, uh, what, will, what can happen if, so that's the anterior pore, and what can happen if the posterior um, neural pore doesn't develop? Well, if the posterior pore, neural pore doesn't develop, uh, what, what can occur is they can just get basically spina bifida, and there's different types of that, spina bifida. And we, we'll kind of go into that uh, later. And so th the anterior pore closes first on the 25th day, and then near the posterior tube closes on the 27th day uh, as well. Now let's just kind of look at how the uh, brain is going to continue to develop. So if I can just draw out the... Uh, so here's the neural tube, and here's the procordial plate. So this is the cephalic end, and this is the caudal end. So the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to get three primary swellings. Uh, one at the top, and you're going to get two kind of bulging out there. Then you're going to get another one here, and another one, and it's going to go down like that. Um, and here's your procordial plate. Uh, so just to give everything names, this is going to be the prosencephalon. This is going to be the mesencephalon. And this is going to be the rhombencephalon. Now, so it doesn't stop here, though. Uh, we're going to get a second swelling. There's going to be five secondary swellings. Now, in the secondary swellings, um, what ends up happening is the prosencephalon is going to break into two. There's going to be a telencephalon, which is growing much faster, and then a diencephalon, uh, which is growing much slower. So the prosencephalon is going to become telencephalon, and it's also going to become the diencephalon. The telencephalon is going to become your um, cerebrum, and this is where you're going to get the lateral ventricles as well. The diencephalon is going to become, you know, thalamus and some other structures, and this is where the third ventricle uh, is going to be located. Um, the mesencephalon is going to just stay the mesencephalon. It doesn't really uh, change up much. And uh, what it's going to uh, eventually become is it's going to become the uh, midbrain and it's going to be the location of the cerebral aqueduct. Uh, that's where you're going to find that. And then um, the rhombencephalon, it forms two grooves as well. Um, the top one would be uh, the top one, so the rhombencephalon it becomes uh, metencephalon and myelencephalon. Oops. Okay. So this is the spinal cord. And there you go. So you're going to get the metencephalon and the myelencephalon. Now, um, the metencephalon, oops, um, the, the metencephalon will become the pons and cerebellum. And this is and and the uh, myelencephalon will eventually become the medulla oblongata, and the fourth ventricle extends through the both of those. Now, just real quick before we end this off, uh, we can uh, also look at the spinal cord. What happens to the spinal cord? Uh, well, what happens um, here is you basically, if, if I did get a cut section of that, um, you get you have the central canal here. Um, dorsally, it's going to extend that way. And that way, this is going to, and then uh, downward, it's going to extend almost like two feet in ears. Um, so the way I memorize it is: these are ears, ears are sensory, and these are feet, feet are motor. And so this is the alar plate, and this is the basal plate. And so you can also remember the basal; your feet isn't you know the base. 
Um, and finally, what we have to look at, we have to go back to these neural crest cells. What happens to those neural crest cells? Uh, they will kind of go throughout the body and they will um, uh, kind of be responsible for doing different things. Neural crest cells. So they just kind of go through, you know, basically a quick list of what they... First of all, they're going to form all the melanocytes. So they go through all the skin. Also, they're going to form the covering of the brain. Pia and arachnoid. And they're going to form all the ganglia. Uh, a lot of the out ganglia that's found outside, such as the sensory ganglia, the dorsal root ganglia, the autonomic, uh, all the ganglia found in the GIT, the heart, and even the uterus for contractions. And, you know, kind of a modified ganglia is going to be the adrenal uh, gland, which is going to secrete, uh, you know, epinephrine and uh, norepinephrine. Uh, and then we're going to also have, uh, gonna, it's going to form some bones, uh, primarily in the facial bones and even including teeth. Um, they're going to go into the parathyroid, they're going to form the C cells, uh, which release calcitonin. They're also going to form the enterochromaffin cells. And finally, they're going to form all the Schwann cells, which covers the uh, peripheral nervous system.